Louis Anacortes, 33, sits on a newly renovated and clean teak and iron bench overlooking Rift Lake. In happier times, he and his family swam in the lake many times. He looked at the freshly polished copper plates on the bench. Donated by the Edmonds family of Mossy Rock, in memory of our beloved grandfather Kennewick Edmonds. This bench was created so that everyone could enjoy the beauty of the place they loved so much. Lewis, a local native, smiled briefly, happily and bitterly, after reading the inscription. He knew why old Kennewick loved this area. It is at this convenient spot that a bench is strategically placed in his honor. Kennewick vacationed here and looked longingly at the crystal clear water that flooded his childhood home decades ago when the city of Tacoma built the Mazalok Dam for the city. Produces electricity. Lewis knew that Reeve Town was here, but it was almost 200 feet from the sparkling lake, which now reflected a brilliant blue sky and dappled clouds. The lake is surrounded by a thick canopy of several native pine trees. Some western coots and yellow pine woodpeckers reach heights of over 100 feet. As a child, Lewis always dreamed of climbing a mountain to see if he could reach the big sky. He remembers his late father fondly. When he was little, he and his father lounged on their backs by the lake. Your old H.L. Leonard bamboo fishing rod is leaning against a tree. They are intended for the landlocked salmon that inhabit these waters. While resting, they looked at the sky and admired the wonderful creations of nature. He told his father that he wanted to climb a pine tree. His father was silent for several minutes, not even considering Lewis's statements. When Lewis thought his father must have missed the lyrics, he began singing the lyrics to Jimi Hendrix's Purple Haze. Sorry for kissing the sky. His father was a terrible singer. He couldn't stand the melody that saved his life, but that didn't stop him from singing. His father's voice trembled again and again, and young Lewis looked around in embarrassment, praying that no one would see his father singing. But when he became an adult, this incident remained forever in his memory. Lewis's parents died of cancer at a very young age. This fact, combined with his understanding of genetics, was one of the reasons for the conference. Life is too short. The lake itself now attracted Lewis's attention. It stretches nearly 23 miles in length and is so deep that no light can penetrate the darkness that shrouds the once vibrant and close-knit community of Riffa. The darkness hides all evidence of his existence because he will never appear in the light again. Lewis thought it was an apt metaphor for their marriage. Any passerby unfamiliar with the nightmare Lewis recently endured can quietly admire the lonely beauty of the warm fall weather that sometimes haunts the Pacific Northwest. Despite current political correctness, locals still call it Indian summer. In this case, there is no more wonderful time and place on Earth. This makes nine months of terrible rain almost bearable. Lewis looked calm on the outside, but he was restless on the inside. He will have to go through this nightmare alone. He was an only child and had few friends other than firefighters. Lewis could not talk to any of the children at the police station about their problems, because unlike what was shown on television, the firefighters did not spend all their free time expressing their fears and feelings or sharing intimate moments with his brothers. No one dares to show weakness in front of others for fear that others will lose confidence in him. Their lives depend on each other. Even a moment's hesitation due to uncertainty about whether someone can be trusted to do the right thing under extreme conditions can be fatal. No, Lewis is completely alone in this situation. He intentionally came a little early because he truly relied on the healing powers of his beloved lake and the magical scenes of nature to survive his meeting with his soon-to-be ex-wife. She asked for it, and her lawyer told her it was best for her to approve it. He was told everything would be fine in family court. Moreover, his lawyers became increasingly frustrated with the obstacles Brian continued to put up to delay the inevitable. Lewis had no idea why Brian continued to insist that their marriage survive his madness. You want your lawyer to request a mandatory consultation. He doesn't care that Washington State family court judges can't enforce the law. Both lawyers tried in vain to talk to Brian until they were blue in the face. Lewis thought that Brian definitely needed treatment, but he didn't care anymore. He thought and sighed. In any case, today all this will end. Brian may have asked for a meeting, but Lewis insisted on it. He knows the summer crowds will be a distant memory, so this place probably belongs to them. The meeting did not go as Brian expected. He quickly abandoned this idea. In fact, the first 12 and a half years of her marriage to Brian had been a wonderful dream. Lewis loved his two daughters, Rainier and Lacey, more than his own life. 
She calls him Rain, and she's a daddy's girl through and through. He is already studying to become a firefighter, like his beloved father. Lacey, on the other hand, is a mini version of her wife. For Lewis, this was just one of countless complications. The family court refuses to separate the children. In fact, in Washington state, there is no age at which children under the age of 18 can decide which parent they will live with in the event of a divorce. But according to his lawyer, the matter did not end there. Although Washington's divorce and child custody laws are complex, they allow a husband and wife to jointly file a child custody plan with the court. If the judge believes the agreement is detailed, complete, and financially fair to the children, he will usually sign it without making any changes. The trick, the lawyers explained, was to get his wife to accept the very difficult proposal that Lewis wanted his wife to accept. Lewis is a realist. Before his lawyer could confirm it, he realized that his job as a firefighter for the Riverside Fire Department, known as RFA, would almost certainly prevent him from having sole custody of his daughters. The dangerous nature of his work and varied work schedule created almost insurmountable obstacles to consideration of detention. He spent time and money, a lot of money, formulating a plan that he carried out. He closed his eyes and let his thoughts go back to that terrible day a few months ago when his nightmare began. He could never be sure that his present life was an episode of this experience, blurred area, movie Groundhog Day. Its reality is both surreal and horribly repetitive. Lewis, dear, can we talk in the room, please? She had just completed the pleasant nightly ritual of putting the girls to bed in their shared bedroom when she heard his voice. Although he needed to sleep since his next 24-hour shift would start tomorrow morning, he really wanted to talk to his wife. I wanted Brian to go into more detail about their mutual desire to buy their own home. The four live in a rented three-bedroom apartment, and now that their careers are secure, they are hoping to buy a forever home. They both agreed that it was best to raise their daughter in her own home. It's more sustainable. Entering the living room, he stopped in the kitchen and took a bottle of water from the refrigerator. He collapsed on the dirty sofa that he inherited from his parents. She turned to Brian and crossed her right leg over her left to look at him. He played with the blonde hair that Brian always covered his ears, then carefully tucked it behind his ear and let his hands fall to his shoulders. What happened, dear? He didn't remember much after that. His memories of their conversation were mostly fragmentary, piercing to his heart and filled with shock, disbelief, and anger. However, he remembers his reaction very well. Months later, he is still ashamed that he reacted so weakly and emotionally. He cried. He even cried in front of her. It was so pathetic that he could actually feel Blaine's pity. He left home, away from the source of his torment. The good thing about being a firefighter is that there is always a bed to sleep on. Nobody asked him his eternal question. Everyone knows the divorce statistics for this job. After a few days, he was able to remember what his wife had told him. Instead of asking his permission, she told him what she was going to do. When he finally returned home, he wanted to ask his wife not to destroy their family. He wanted her to go to therapy with him to figure out how to save their marriage. But before he can begin, he is attacked by his innocent and adorable daughters. Brian promised him that they would come to the meeting at his parents' house. He turned and looked at his wife who stood there with an evil, victorious smile on her face. The love he felt for her had long since faded. Today, it has been replaced by burning hatred. He looked at Blaine, his usually calm face contorted with almost murderous rage. For a moment, his sense of superiority disappeared, giving way to fear. But that's when his daughters turned on him. In their blissful ignorance, they asked him why he had left them. He literally had to break free from Rain and Lacey's desperate grasp as they begged and screamed and cried. Rain is the worst. Dad, how could I be a firefighter without you? He knew that no matter the outcome, this scene would play in his head until the day he died. However, Lewis knew that in the long run, the alternative would be worse for his ladies. But in the end, he was grateful to Brian. In an instant, he went from a weak victim to a man with a clear path. One day, Lewis made a mental note to thank him. He regained his dignity and took the first step towards restoring it. Today, I was grateful to him. I know this is hard for you ladies, and I hope one day you will understand. It's just that your mother and I are separated. We want different things in life, but I promise you that I will never leave you, and I will see you often, and I will love you forever. He didn't look at Blaine. When she was finally free of her daughters, she decisively left the apartment for the last time. Since that day, 
Lewis has not spoken to his soon-to-be ex-wife. He acted wisely and gave the floor to his lawyers. Lewis didn't know whether he fell asleep or was so immersed in his memories that he lost track of time. Hi, Lewis. Thank you for getting to know me. Our girls miss you very much. Her voice, which had once been a comforting and caring greeting to him, now pierced his soul like nails through an old chalkboard. He shook his head and tried to wake up. It's showtime. My lawyer told me to do it, Brian. In an ideal world, I would never have to see your terrible face again. He didn't even look at her. He looked ahead at the lake, seeking strength in the calm, familiar water. He heard her gasp in shock. Yes, he thought this meeting would be different. Lewis couldn't help but smile and look at her. I know it's your money, Brian, but before we start, I have to tell you something. This is the last conversation that you and I will have on this topic. If you repeat any of these ridiculous reasons, you will repeat. Disgusting, because it will strengthen our marriage if you tell me again how much you love me. If you tell me that the only thing my fragile male ego can do is if you imply that I am responsible for the destruction of the family. I'm going to get up and leave here right now. I feel so disgusted with you that I feel physically ill just being around you. Lewis, I, uh, I don't know. Lewis was sure Brian was going to repeat his nasty, but I love you both speech and brought his hand to his face. I'll save you the trouble, Brian. Did you see that? He pointed to the large manila envelopes lying on the bench. These divorce papers will end our marriage. In a few minutes, you will take them with you when you leave here. He will sign them after his lawyer reviews them. You will return them to my lawyer within 36 business hours. He turned to admire the stunning view before continuing. Your lawyer will confirm that everything here meets the requirements of the state's parenting plan. But, but, but I don't want... I didn't want my wife to cheat, so we both broke up. Now be careful because this is important. Lewis sighed in disappointment, although deep down he knew that Brian would make the situation more difficult than necessary. Be more difficult. Parenting plans are the biggest concern of the family court. My offer is fair, we don't have much, so we divide the rest in half. Custody of the girls belongs to them. What? You're not going to argue with me about this? Blaine snorted. Of course not. Girls need mothers, and even if you're a lousy wife, you're a decent mother, so no. You will keep the apartment so that the girls do not have to change schools to succeed. New friends, pay half of my living expenses and pay more than minimum required support. I also visit my daughters often. Everything is explained here. At that moment, Brian was overcome by a thousand emotions. I was surprised, happy, and disappointed at the same time. She relied on Lewis's love for his daughters to keep his home and their marriage afloat. At this point, Brian began to realize what he had lost and began to cry bitterly. Look, Brian, the reality is that due to my work schedule and occupational hazards, I have no chance of getting custody of the girls. Touching the one-yard line at halftime in the playoffs doesn't change anything. But, 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 Lewis, we can't. Don't interrupt, Brian. We'll be fine. You need to pay very, very close attention to the next part, he shouted impatiently. He pulled a thick, letter-sized envelope from his pocket and handed it to her. He opened it and began flipping through the contents. As I already said, if the divorce papers are not signed within 36 hours and do not arrive at my lawyer's desk in written form, then everyone in your family, your co-workers, your boss, and everyone you know will receive a copy. This is your copy. It describes in detail and vividly what you did to end your marriage. Most importantly, it documents your requests. I accept this as part of my commitment to remain married to you. Although it was expensive, Lewis spent every crown to obtain the investigator's conclusion. I will also make sure that my daughters know exactly how and why their families are being destroyed. Brian was clearly surprised by what he saw. I couldn't imagine that this was true. No, it must be a lie. Her lover is not this man. Lewis is lying. To be honest, Lewis wasn't sure he had the courage to do this because it would hurt his daughters a lot. On the other hand, he does not believe that it is really necessary to resort to the nuclear option. In addition, you may end up in jail and unemployment. Revenge porn laws are a double-edged sword. He also really hoped that his lover would turn out to be who Lewis thought he was. And the best part is that Brian is just as submissive and trusting as they come when it comes to idiots. But Brian, the main thing is that you sign exactly as I suggested. When your lawyer calls me and says, my client and I, or when he changes commas, periods, or semicolons, take off your gloves, and everyone will know that you are a piece of shit. 
Despite his surprise, Brian continued to review the investigators' reports. During Lewis's monologue, all he could do was make meaningless noises, sob, cry, and shake his head in disbelief. It shouldn't have been this way. Why couldn't Lewis understand? Of course, what I offer here is a quid pro quo, so I am willing to do it in exchange for your cooperation. I promise to never humiliate you or blame you for the separation of our family from my daughters. I'm even polite to my boyfriend when we go to a girls' event together. Hell, I'll even shake his sticky hand if I have to. In all respects, I will be as polite and courteous as if we had decided to part ways amicably. I will do the same for every member of your family and friends. I will do this even if you and Slime want to see each other for the last time. I will take care of you temporarily for a short period. I'll be spending a short weekend somewhere. In short, I will be the best ex-husband a cheating wife can have. That's what I thought, Brian. It's all in the report you have in your hands. Lewis tapped the document in her hand with her finger. You are not the first and you will not be the last. Your file will be listed here. Haha, <laughs> he's not that kind of person. He really loves me, she said very quietly, and Lewis had to strain hard to hear her pitiful words. This made him smile. He exhaled slowly, calm washing over him as another breeze blew across his face from the direction of his beloved lake. Almost done. I knew I had chosen the right path. Oh, I knew there was a risk, but now everything was under control. He believed that everything would turn out the way he wanted. His voice became much calmer. Look at me, Brian. We're almost done. It's important that you pay attention. She looked at him. Her tear-stained face was a mask of confusion, ruined mascara, and fear. His ideal world was destroyed. When he finally met Lewis's gaze, she saw a cold, menacing face and a pair of dark eyes looking at her. Brian, take care of my daughters. They are our daughters, Lewis, he protested weakly. His shyness made it seem like a big deal. No, Brian, that's not true. My daughters. You cheated on her and left her like you did me because you were weak and couldn't close your legs. I need you to take care of her. I'm only a few years old. What are you talking about? You can almost feel his fear. I will never give it up. You already did it. You just haven't noticed yet. Your friends will take care of it anyway, he said matter-of-factly. Has he ever said that line to you? Oh, honey, take some. It will make our sex better. We love with a strength you cannot imagine. You will be nervous. Fire! Come on, wash your face with this. She looked down at her hands again, looking embarrassed. He will soon share you with his friends. Come on, honey, Justin is a good boy. Don't you want to see what it's like to be loved by several men at the same time? Brian slowly shook his head with blank eyes and muttered, He wouldn't do this to me. He loves me. Damn, Brian. In a few months that bastard will be pranking you in his favorite bar. Lewis was already on his way. But the good news is that I only have a few years left to complete the courses required to obtain a bachelor's degree in fire management. Then, when Frank retires, I can apply for the fire chief position then I'll almost reach my goal. The time of bankers. This should be the moment you start to crash and burn. I will then file a petition with the court for full custody. It is quite possible that he was drunk and unconscious at that moment. You're wrong. He's not like that at all. Please, Lewis, I really love you. I love our family. Why don't you see... No, it's not like that, Lewis growled. You've never done this before. Honestly, I don't think you're capable of loving anyone but yourself. I was blind to this fact simply because I liked who I thought you were. I'm just your convenient grounding rod. Girls, you just made me stronger. When your fucking boyfriend shows up with his amazing cock, you're playing right into his hands. You are abandoning your family like yesterday's kefir. Well, maybe we could, uh, could we do this again? She suggested through tears. No, Brian, we can't. There is nothing you can do to start over. And you will not give it up because then your failures as a wife, mother, and person will be known to the whole world. You will see. No, you will pretend that you and your ass are happy and in love. You will deliberately take the path of self-destruction because you have no other choice. Because if you do, then deep down you will admit how disgusting you are. If you dare to evaluate yourself, you will not be able to accept your conclusions. You have no choice but to live with yourself for the rest of your miserable life. But hey, if I'm wrong and you're truly in love, then I'm pretty sure it won't be long before your amazing dicks start revealing your true feelings. You have to be careful around babies. You're limiting your style. At first you might ask, why don't we let Lewis play with them more often? These questions, 
You won't fight him because you don't want to miss out on good sex. That's what you told me when you said I'd have to share you with that parasite. If at some point he threatened to leave you after he proposed, convinced you and finally promised to leave if you didn't let me get these girls, well, you're back to square one. Don't you and you and you. He smiled at her confusion. Anyway, I won and you lost. It's just a matter of time. And uh, I'm a patient person. Lewis looked at the blue lake again. For a moment, the wind died down. The water in the cabinet spout is like glass. Time to go. He promised to return here often with his daughters. Her daughters loved it, but it wasn't enough. He wants them to love her as much as he does. He stood up not because he was already with her, but because so much adrenaline was flowing through his body that his central nervous system no longer allowed him to sit still. He needed to discuss a more important detail with her. Lewis walked tensely behind the bench. He placed his hand on the soft, stained teak on either side of Brian's shoulders and squeezed it tightly. He slowly leaned forward and whispered something in her ear. He said in a calm but angry voice with quiet anger in his tone. I'll tell you what this toy is. If I get even the slightest hint that it's inappropriate with my daughters, I'll kill her. It doesn't matter what happens. What about drugs or sexual harassment? The coast is clean. I look at them in their pajamas. I'm going to kill him. Tell him not to sneak around and look over his shoulder because I'm going to attack him head on. I want him to be the last mortal. I understand that I will be the one who will put an end to his suffering on this earth, his damned existence. It's the same with you, Blaine. His voice began to tremble. His throat hurt from the tension. His grip tightened, adrenaline rising with every word he spat at her. You say it, Brian. With those last words, the hardwood gave in to Brian's death grip with a thud. Brian jumped up. Brian looked curiously at the broken door. It must be dry rot, right? Brian didn't look at him. She never stopped crying and moaning. His body was shaking as if he was suffering from hypothermia. Remember, Brian, 36 hours. I'm not yet 37. I'm leaving. He looked at his hands. His fingernails were broken. His hands were bloody and covered in splinters. Mm-hmm. Very rare. It doesn't hurt at all. He looked at Brian silently for a while. All he saw was an empty shell of what had once been a man. He looked around one last time, took a deep breath of the clean mountain air, then turned and left. I don't know if it's day or night, 